for the first time in over 60 years, we have fragments set of a biblical book. The lost book of Adam and Eve has been found, revealing surprising things. Step into a fascinating journey where the timeless tale of Adam and Eve takes on captivating new dimensions. Imagine stumbling upon a long lost manuscript that unveils a fresh perspective on their post Eden odyssey. This captivating video offers a glimpse into their struggles to reconnect with the divine unraveling profound truths about human nature and the enigmas of creation. Prepare to be intrigued as these revelations challenge conventional beliefs, inviting us to rethink our understanding of ancient narratives. Join us as we embark on an adventure through the pages of this newfound gem, the Book of Adam and Eve, and witness how it reshapes our perception of the world. In 1926, Amidst the excavation of King Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt, a remarkable find emerged. A manuscript believed to recount the story of Adam and Eve, titled The Contradiction of Adam and Eve, or The Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. This extraordinary text delves into their journey post-expulsion from Eden, introducing familiar characters from humanity's dawn. While not part of the canonical scriptures, it presents an intriguing alternative narrative offering fresh insights into their timeless saga, separate from the established accounts found in the Bible and Quran. The true origins of the book of Adam and Eve remain shrouded in mystery, with scholars speculating it could date back centuries before Christ's time. While the identity of its author remains elusive, some theories suggest it may have been crafted by an ancient Egyptian writer, possibly originating in Arabic. Despite its obscure beginnings, this text's influence transcended language barriers, with translations extending its reach into Ethiopian culture and beyond. Beyond its narrative, the Book of Adam and Eve holds profound significance. Interestingly, echoes of its themes can be found in both the Jewish Talmud and the Islamic Quran. This hints at its potential role in shaping early religious thought, despite not being included in the canon of major religious texts. The presence of these shared concepts underscores the enduring impact this book may have had on shaping humanity's understanding of its origins. Attributed to an anonymous Egyptian scribe who penned the tale in Arabic, the Book of Adam and Eve eventually found its way into Ethiopian literature through translation. However, determining its exact age presents a challenge, with conventional wisdom placing its composition several centuries before Christ. The first English translation surfaced in the 19th century, revealing glimpses of its narrative embedded in the Talmudic and Quranic traditions, cementing its importance in the annals of early human literature. A fascinating revelation regarding this enigmatic text is its division into two volumes, comprising the Book of Adam and Eve. The first volume delves into the gripping narrative of Adam and Eve's expulsion from the paradisiacal Eden chronicling their encounters with the temptations orchestrated by Satan. Meanwhile, the second volume unfolds the compelling saga of Seth and the tumultuous clans descended from Cain before the Great Flood. In a surprising twist, the text introduces the notion of Cain and Abel having twin sisters. Cain, drawn to his twin sister Lulua, finds himself entangled in familial expectations, leading to the tragic demise of Abel. In vivid detail, the text recounts the Earth's shuddering response to Abel's spilled blood and Cain's futile attempts to conceal the crime, culminating in Adam and Eve tenderly sheltering Abel's remains within the sanctity of their cave for seven years. Moreover, the Book of Adam and Eve diverges from the traditional biblical narrative by suggesting that both Cain and Abel made offerings of both blood and grain. This departure challenges the account in Genesis 4, 3, Four, where only Cain's offering of produce from the soil is mentioned, while Abel presents the choicest portions from his flock. This discrepancy adds layers of complexity to the post-Eden narrative, unveiling a comprehensive depiction of Adam and Eve's journey as they navigate a new beginning within the mysterious confines of the Cave of Treasures. As Adam and Eve bid farewell to their idyllic abode, the Garden of Eden, the gates sealed shut behind them, guarded by a formidable angel wielding fiery weapons. Journeying across rugged terrain, they stumbled upon a cave atop a lofty hill, seeking refuge within its sheltering embrace. Their provisions diminished to humble fare of cooked grains, foraged vegetables, and steered herbs, 
starkly contrasting with the abundance they once enjoyed. Entering the cave hesitantly, Adam grappled with waves of sorrow, mourning the stark contrast between their current dwelling and the lush splendor of the garden they once called home. He likened the cave's confines to a prison, yearning for the expansive beauty they once reveled in. While the rocky shelter provided a semblance of protection, it paled in comparison to the divine sanctuary they once inhabited, where celestial beings danced in praise. Within the confines of the cave, Adam and Eve bore children, Cain, Abel, Labuda, and Kalima, amidst their reflections on the irrevocable change wrought by their departure from Eden. Adam, imbuing the cavern with significance, bestowed blessings upon it, sanctifying it as a sacred space for prayer for himself and his descendants. Dubbing it Murugas, or the Cave of Treasures, he imbued it with the legacy of their journey and the hopes for their progeny. Adam's journey highlights the profound mercy of God towards his creation, even in the face of punishment for transgression. As Adam and Eve departed the sanctuary of the garden, their spirits weighed down by uncertainty and fear, God's reassuring words reached them, infusing them with strength and resolve. Despite the desolation of the unfamiliar landscape before them, devoid of the verdant beauty they once knew, God's comforting presence bolstered their spirits. Overwhelmed by the stark contrast of their new surroundings and the altered appearance of the Tree of Knowledge, Adam and Eve trembled with apprehension at the sight of the angelic guardian standing watch with a flaming sword. Fear gripped their hearts as they anticipated divine retribution. Yet the angel, moved by compassion, interceded on their behalf, pleading for God's kindness. In his infinite compassion, God beheld their distress and offered words of solace, lifting them from the depths of fear and despair. He reassured them of his enduring plan for Adam and his descendants, promising a future shaped by his divine will. Despite the trials ahead, God's unwavering promise served as a beacon of hope, guiding Adam and Eve through the uncertainty of their journey on earth until the fulfillment of his divine plan. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. All right, let's keep rolling. God's promise to Adam reveals his profound mercy and compassion for humanity. He assures Adam that the same word that created him, the word against whom he transgressed and was commanded out of the garden, would also be the one to raise him up when he fell and ultimately save him. Initially, Adam is puzzled by the mention of five and a half days, fearing the imminent end of the world. Yet God, in his boundless mercy, elucidates the meaning, explaining that these days symbolize 5,500 years during which the word would come to redeem Adam and his descendants. In this act of mercy, God reaffirms Adam's significance as a being created in his own image and likeness. He exhorts Adam to fortify his heart and remain steadfast within the sanctuary of the Cave of Treasures, where he would find solace and protection. Upon receiving this comforting revelation from God, Adam's spirit is uplifted, reassured by the promise of salvation and the divine plan for his redemption. Through this exchange, God demonstrates his unwavering commitment to guide and save his beloved creation, exemplifying his boundless love and compassion for humanity. The symbolism surrounding the Cave of Treasures as a place of penance for Adam and Eve's wrongdoing contrasts with Adam's preference for the expansive sea. In the creation narrative, the vast crystal sea borders the Garden of Eden, strategically positioned to greet the rising sun. Beyond its shimmering expanse lies an endless stretch of water, enveloping the earth and stretching towards the heavens. To the north of the garden lies a remarkable sea, renowned for its unparalleled purity and clarity. Legends speak of its pristine waters, so transparent that one can peer into the very depths of the earth. Metaphorically bathing in these crystalline waters signifies a profound purification, capable of transforming even the darkest souls into purity itself. It's believed that this sea was crafted by God out of his boundless goodwill, foreseeing humanity's future. Following humanity's expulsion from Eden, souls would be born on earth, among them righteous individuals 
whose spirits God would resurrect on the final day. The significance of the sea lies in its pivotal role in humanity's eventual redemption. As souls return to their earthly bodies, they will partake in the sacred act of bathing in the sea's cleansing waters, absolving themselves of sin and paving the way for spiritual renewal and reconciliation. In this way, the sea symbolizes the divine promise of redemption and the enduring mercy of God, offering hope for humanity's eventual return to grace and purity. God's deliberate decision to banish Adam from the garden with strategic placement away from the northern border, where the Sea of Cleansing lay, reveals his wisdom and foresight. By ensuring Adam and Eve's distance from the tempting waters, God prevented them from washing away their sins and escaping the constant reminder of their transgressions. Placing Adam on the southern edge, though offering the soothing fragrance of the garden's trees, risk distraction from the remorseful reflection on his actions. Instead, God, in his kindness and wisdom, directed Adam to a dwelling on the vast western border of the garden, where the land stretched wide and expansive. Here, beneath the garden's expanse, lay the cave of treasures, serving as a constant reminder of Adam's choices and their consequences. Despite the promise of eventual redemption through divine assistance, God's mercy came with a stipulated time frame imposing upon Adam and Eve the weight of their loss compared to their former life in the garden. In this nuanced narrative, God's guidance reflects both his compassion and his insistence on accountability. While offering comfort and hope for the future, he ensures that Adam and Eve remain cognizant of the gravity of their actions and the journey toward redemption that lies ahead. The profound consequences of Adam and Eve's expulsion from the garden extend beyond their immediate circumstances, shaping the very essence of humanity and its spiritual journey. Central to this transformation is the concept of the bright nature within humans, depicted as their purest, highest, and most divine essence. Often referred to as the true self, the higher self, or the soul, this aspect is believed to be eternal, transcending the confines of our physical bodies and detached from worldly desires and attachments. In essence, the bright nature represents the eternal divine part of the human being in constant communion with God and untouched by the illusions of the material world. Through practices such as meditation, prayer, and inner reflection, individuals can nurture and cultivate this spiritual aspect, fostering a deeper connection with their true essence and with the divine. By aligning with their bright nature, humans can transcend the limitations of their earthly existence tapping into a source of boundless wisdom, love, and compassion. The story of Adam and Eve serves as a timeless allegory for the journey of the soul, highlighting the enduring quest for spiritual awakening and reunion with the divine. Despite the challenges and trials encountered along the way, the eternal nature of the bright essence within humans offers hope and guidance, inspiring individuals to seek truth, cultivate virtue, and strive for union with the divine. The loss of their bright nature due to their transgression plunged Adam and Eve into a state of profound sorrow and realization. Once blessed with the ability to perceive distant things and commune intimately with God, they now found themselves bereft of this divine connection. As they entered the cave, the rock overhead served as a tangible symbol of the obstruction of their view of the heavens, reinforcing their separation from the divine realm. God gently reminded Adam of their former state, when their obedience allowed them to possess this bright nature, granting them the ability to see beyond the physical realm. However, their disobedience resulted in its loss, confining their perception to the limitations of their physical senses. Despite this revelation, Adam and Eve remained steadfast in their faith, worshiping and praising God even as communication between them ceased. Strengthened by their unwavering belief in God's providence, Adam and Eve appealed for mercy, particularly concerning their protection from the now-feared beasts. Adam, once entrusted with naming the creatures in the Garden of Eden, now found himself seeking divine protection from their potential harm. Reflecting on his past interactions with the beasts, Adam realized the consequences of his disobedience, recognizing that they were now cursed to turn against him and his descendants. In their desperation, Adam and Eve cried out to God, beseeching him to shield them from the threat posed by these once submissive creatures. 
Their plea for protection echoed their profound sense of vulnerability and displacement as they grappled with the harsh realities of their newfound existence outside the sanctuary of the garden. Despite their fall from grace, Adam and Eve clung to the hope that God, in his mercy, would provide refuge and safeguard them from the dangers of the world they now inhabited. Upon hearing Adam's words, God took pity on him, acknowledging the truth in Adam's fear that the beasts would indeed rise against them due to their transgressions. God, in his anger towards Adam and Eve, cursed the beasts, yet, in his mercy, God reminded Adam of his covenant with him, assuring him that he would not forsake it. However, he also made it clear that Adam could not return to the garden until the appointed time of the great five and two days had passed. God then issued the command to all the beasts, birds, and creatures of the earth to approach Adam and become acquainted with him. They were instructed not to trouble him, Eve, or any of their righteous descendants. In obedience to God's decree, all the creatures paid homage to Adam, except for the serpent, which angered God by refusing to comply. This tale offers a mirror to our modern world, where humans share complex relationships with both domestic and wild animals. Despite this, humans still hold a degree of authority over animals, particularly wild ones, as seen in the care and conservation efforts in zoos worldwide. While humans receive God's mercy and compassion, Adam and Eve's tragic choice to end their own lives serves as a poignant reminder of the consequences of their actions, which we'll delve into further. One poignant day, Adam and Eve emerged from the Cave of Treasures and stood before the gate of the garden, their hearts heavy with longing for the paradise they once called home. Unable to enter, they turned towards the southern side of the garden, where they stumbled upon the source of the life-giving water that sustained Eden. Flowing from the roots of the Tree of Life, this water, as depicted in the biblical account in Genesis, splits into four rivers, the Tigris, the Euphrates, the Pishon, and the Gihon, symbolizing a spiritual energy coursing through all of creation, connecting every living being to the divine. As Adam and Eve approached the source of the water beneath the Tree of Life, Adam's heart weighed heavy with grief. Overwhelmed by sorrow, he began to lament, beating his chest and directing accusations towards Eve for the curses and hardships they and their descendants endured. Startled by Adam's outburst, Eve sought to understand the cause of his distress. Adam, in his anguish, explained how they had once taken the water for granted in the garden. But now, exiled to a foreign land, they recognized its preciousness and potential to sustain their bodies. As Eve absorbed Adam's words, tears welled up in her eyes, mirroring his deep sorrow. Consumed by the intensity of their emotions and the bitterness of their circumstances, Adam and Eve reached a desperate resolution. Driven by despair, they made a fateful decision to end their lives by plunging into the water, hoping to escape the painful reminders of their loss and suffering. This part of the narrative may seem perplexing, depicting an extreme response to their despair. One might question whether their fate truly ended in the water. Contrary to expectations, their apparent demise served an unexpected purpose for their mortal bodies. As Adam and Eve lay on the verge of death submerged in the water, God, in his boundless mercy and grace, cast his gaze upon them, dispatching an angel to their aid. With divine intervention, the angel lifted them from the water's depths and carried them to the safety of the shore where they lay motionless, as if lifeless. Reporting their condition to God, the angel proclaimed the apparent passing of his creatures. Yet in a wondrous display of divine power, God's word breathed life back into Adam and Eve, resurrecting them from the brink of death. This event serves as a powerful testament to God's unwavering faithfulness and his steadfast commitment to his promises, regardless of the circumstances. As Adam awoke, he recounted to God how they had not realized the importance of water while dwelling in the garden. However, upon leaving the sanctuary of Eden and arriving in the unfamiliar land, they discovered their desperate need for it. In response, God explained to Adam that they had been unaware of the significance of water while under his command and adorned with bright angelic forms. But now, in their mortal state outside the garden, water became essential for their sustenance and growth 
Overwhelmed by thirst, sweltering heat, and sorrow, Adam and Eve were faced with a pivotal choice. Despite their dire need, Adam resolved not to partake of the water, fearing that it would only exacerbate their punishments and those of their descendants. United in their decision, they turned away from the water, retreating to the safety of the Cave of Treasures. Inside the cavern, Adam's sorrow weighed heavily upon him, driving him to throw himself to the ground in despair. As darkness enveloped the cave, Eve, unable to bear witness to Adam's anguish, rushed to his side. Yet, despite her efforts, she felt powerless to alleviate his suffering. Overwhelmed by a sense of helplessness and sorrow, Eve could only listen to the sounds of Adam's distress, unable to see him amidst the darkness that enveloped them. In this poignant moment of human frailty and despair, Adam and Eve grappled with the harsh realities of their existence outside the garden, their hearts burdened by the weight of their transgressions and the consequences that followed. Once again, God's boundless mercy shone upon Adam and Eve in their darkest hour. As Adam lay seemingly lifeless and Eve remained silent in fear of the enveloping darkness, God's compassionate word reached them rescuing Adam from the brink of death and restoring Eve's ability to speak. The unfamiliarity of the darkness they encountered starkly contrasted with the perpetual light of the Garden of Eden, where visibility was crystal clear. In the garden, their bright nature allowed them to see each other clearly, fostering a deep sense of connection. However, in the cave, even though they were physically close, the darkness obscured their sight, rendering them unable to perceive each other. God underscored the significance of obedience in the garden, where their bright nature flourished in harmony with his divine will. Through obedience, a radiant light enveloped Adam and his companions, illuminating their path. Yet, transgression resulted in the loss of this divine light, plunging them into darkness. In his mercy, God refrained from subjecting Adam to total darkness, instead clothing him in a mortal body adorned with skin capable of withstanding the rigors of the world. God's compassion extended further as he comforted Adam, assuring him that the darkness would not endure indefinitely, but would dissipate after twelve hours. With the passing of darkness, daylight would return, offering Adam and his descendants the opportunity to resume their tasks and continue their journey. In this comforting reassurance, God's enduring love and mercy shone brightly, guiding Adam and Eve through the trials of their mortal existence and offering hope for the dawn of a new day. God's words of encouragement to Adam resonate with timeless wisdom, reassuring him that the darkness he faced was not a punitive measure, but rather an integral part of the natural order established by the divine. Through the alternation of day and night, God had intricately woven a rhythmic cycle into the fabric of creation, where light emerges from darkness, signifying the ebb and flow of life itself. This divine arrangement serves a dual purpose providing humans with the opportunity to work diligently during the day and rest peacefully during the night, while allowing animals to forage for sustenance under the cloak of darkness. It's a covenant between God and Adam that endures through the ages, evidenced by the unyielding rhythm of 12 hours of daylight followed by 12 hours of darkness, as promised by God to Adam. True to his word, Daylight unfailingly follows the darkness, symbolizing hope and renewal in the face of adversity. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. Your thoughts and feedback are invaluable to us, so please share them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more thought-provoking content that delves into the depths of human understanding and spiritual enlightenment. Spiritual. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.